Oh, there you go. <laughs> He's the new boy. The Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to call the Veterans and Military Affairs Finance and Policy Committee to order. It is the 20th of March. Uh, do we have uh, minutes from the last meeting here? Yep. Okay. Representative Clardy, have you had a chance to look at the minutes? I have. Good. And uh, would you like to move the minutes? So moved. Thank you. The minutes have been uh, moved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes say, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. We've got the minutes. Um, we would, uh, let's, let's stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Chair Bliss, if you are, lead Bliss, if you would lead us. Thank you. Next session. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, this morning we have Representative Anderson, if you'd like to come forward with your bill, uh, House File 3011. Um, this bill uh, is going to be uh, laid over for possible inclusion as we uh, move this to the Ways and Means Committee. So, Representative Anderson, if you would uh, present the bill, please. Thank you, Chair Newton and members. Um, this is uh, um, a, a pretty simple bill. Um, it was, uh, there was a uh, $774,000 which was dedicated um, in the 2022 VET Supplemental Bill so just nine months ago, um, to the uh, Veterans Campground in Big Marine uh, for wastewater systems upgrade. Um, at, since that was just nine months ago, they had been working diligently and uh, they were out for bids. They have them back and they should break ground in August. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the time frame was essentially would have the money expiring <laughs> before then. Um, so I don't know how that happened, but it did. So we're just requesting that we um, extend uh, the one-time appropriation <laughs> until 2025. There's no extra dollars, essentially, uh, with this. And with that, I'll stand for questions. Good. Thank you, Representative Anders. Is there anyone in the audience that has uh, anything that they would like to say about the bill? Members of the committee? Good. This is a pretty simple bill, uh, and there's actually no funding involved because it's already been paid for. So. Uh, with that, I, I renew my new motion at House Files 3011 be laid over for possible inclusion in the um, probable inclusion in the omnibus. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you uh, Representative thank you. Anderson. And so now, next we have uh, House File 1937, which is our, our main bill of the year. And uh, I'll be going up with. Uh, Ben Johnson is here, I think, and uh, uh, General Mankey. Uh, if you all would like to come up, we can get that bill going. And uh, Representative Elkins, if mm -hmm. you will take over the chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> okay. Chair, with your permission, we'll do this in three sections. We'll have uh, General Mankey go first with uh, the uh, guard section section of the bill, and then uh, Mr. Johnson with the uh, MDVA. And Mr. Chair, would you like to move uh, move your bill? Uh, I'd like to move House File 1937, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair. First and foremost, thank you for uh, meeting with us and working through these numbers. Uh, I know we're greatly appreciative for the collaboration as we look at some of the things that are going forward. Um, <clears throat> and really, in our bill, if we look at it, um, I know there's some uh, our our portion oh, yeah. of the bill, I should say, as we <clears throat> look forward. General Mankey, you could remind the the uh, 
sound system in this room really sucks, and so you kind of need, <laughs> we need to uh, yeah. speak into the mics in here. I, I need to sound like a general. Is that you're yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and for the record, I'm Major General Sean Mank. I'm the Acting General of the Minnesota National mm -hmm. Guard. Um, and as I was saying, I appreciate the, the collaboration working with the chair. As we, uh, yeah, as, mm -hmm. as you all know, the budget target numbers came out last week, and and um, so we kind of worked through this and and looked at it. And if, if you look at our our portion of the bill, um, you know, there's an increase to the general support funds uh, throughout the years, and then there's an uh, enlisted and retention bonus uh, increase, um, and then we have uh, ads for our domestic operations communications and capabilities, which we talked about uh, before the committee here not too long ago. We have an ad for the holistic health and fitness, the H2F. Uh, which we talked about briefly, and then uh, as well as an ad for the cyber coordination cell. Uh, the specific numbers, do you want me to get in those, Mr. Chair? Uh, only if uh, members of the committee uh, uh, want, to, want to get into the numbers. We've seen all of this before. Well, I, I think we can, uh, yeah. and, and Mr. Chair and General Mack, I should mention that, that, that we're, um, we have a, a DE amendment uh, before us, and what we're speaking to is the, the contents of the DE amendment, I, I think, I'm, if I'm correct. Yes, uh, Mr. <coughs> Chair, uh, when we get to my portion of the bill, yep. I think we can do the DE amendment. There's, there's one portion of, of uh, that we have not requested or presented to the, this committee before, and that's an Army Compact. Combat Fitness Test Field House, uh, mm -hmm. and we're uh, we are asking for uh, 17.6 million dollars in cash for construction of this field house <coughs> up at A Hats. Uh, that includes both the design funds as well as the, as the funds for this uh, facility. Um, you know, one of the things that has changed with the way that the Army conducts uh, fitness tests is it used to be sit-ups, push-ups, and a two-mile run. You used to be able to kind of do that just about anywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the equipment that's needed now for the new Army ECFT, it, it's a rather, um, you know, you need special barbells, special weights. Um, uh, desirable to do it on mm. turf. If you don't do it on turf, the standard for doing it, I would argue, is, is much more difficult. Um, and uh, we are now to the point where we're sending our soldiers to a uh, warrior leader course, uh, basic non-commissioned officer, you know, uh, uh, NCOES, OES, WOCS, and, uh, uh, these service members, um, in order to compete, complete the course, they have to pass this test. Um, and, and we have ways to do that, but it, it's rather cumbersome. From, from a guard force of about 10,400 soldiers right now, they're required to take a four record test annually. Uh, and that's four <coughs> records. So you, you could say, well, we can do that during the summer, but I think we all know if we're gonna try to pass a PT test, the time to start preparing for that PT <coughs> test is not a couple weeks before we take the PT test, but rather we should take it uh, periodically and have the means to do this. And you could also argue that there's other resources available where there's, you know, you could get to turf inside and we can do that, but the part of the problem with that is the logistical burden of moving all that equipment to these locations where, where you need to conduct these tests. So, so we're asking for this funding <coughs> and uh, you know, I believe it is impairment to the readiness of the long term of the, of the Minnesota National Guard. Uh, the location that we're proposing to put it is the, at AHATS. Uh, and as you know, at AHATS, there is also a, a rather big reserve training armory up there as well. Uh, we would certainly open this facility up to all branches, all components of service to use this facility for this problem set that really I would say that the Army gave us and we haven't really thought through the second and third order effects of that but we do know that uh, this is something that uh, we think we need for the readiness of the Minnesota National <coughs> Guard and our services as we move forward. Um, if, if you look at the, the slide packet in front of you, uh, we're, we're asking to put a 200 meter track, so it's a rather big facility inside of it, and then a, a turf in, inside of that, uh, which would allow us to administer this test and then have the ability really to train 12 months a year in Minnesota. Uh, with our resources, and as I said, we would use this this facility for all components uh, of of the armed forces to use this, and and frankly, other agencies that might need to use this facility. This would be one-time money, um, so once it's paid for, uh, the maintenance and upkeep and facilities would be picked up by the federal government. Uh, it, it would need to be in cash money because it's on federal land. Is where we would propose that we're putting it. 
Thank you. Oh. Go ahead. And Mr. Chair uh, and uh, Mr. Chair, uh, General Mankey, uh, you answered kind of a couple of my questions right there at, at the end, and that's the whole thing about being a combined uh, operational force so that the uh, the USAR folks would be able to use that facility as well. Um, is there kind of on a two-parter, is there for other services, the uh, Air Force or Naval Reserve or uh, any, or would, would there be a capability of a multi-purpose use of this other than just for the AFCT or uh, ACFT? Mr. Chair, Representative Beans, absolutely. You know, we w this facility would allow us to put the equipment there that's needed for really the Air Force Army. I'm sorry, the Army Reserves, and the National Guard to take their tests, and any other recruiters or whatever that might want to take that. And then it could be used multi-purpose for other stuff. Um, you know, it, if you look at the diagram, it would have a 200-meter track inside of a building, and then inside of that turf. So you could, yes, you could use it for really whatever the space would be. Could be used for, uh, and absolutely would open it up to any component. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is something that we have been looking at a problem set really since the ACFT was initiated by the Army, and uh, we we asked to come forward with it because of the situation that the state is in right now, um, and the fact that it is a one-time funding. You know, once it's funded, we we own it, but uh, we don't have the funding to build it. But uh, much like Ripley is used by multi-agencies, inter-agencies, uh, this could be the same used by the inter-agencies if needed for, for example, the state patrol or other local law enforcement agencies. We would, we would schedule it much the same way we do put the training ranges and training facilities that we have at, up at Camp Ripley. Yep, Mr. Chair, uh, General Mikey, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, taking the opportunity. Minnesota has been forward-looking on so many things uh, in the past, and you continue to do that. Um, I kind of wish there would be more money or more get from uh, from, from the federal government, that, you know, mandating that we've got this new uh, <clears throat> new physical training test that we do. But uh, I think you're doing the right thing, uh, preparing our soldiers, our, our future leaders, uh, to be able to not only just uh, pass but actually succeed at a higher level. And, and the inter interagency cooperation that you're talking about, uh, I think it's it's money well spent. So thank you very much, General Mankey and Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Representative Bliss, I think you had a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, just looking over the, the bill and the writer language, I don't see this listed anywhere. Um, are we going to add it, the language to the bill through an amendment? Mr. Mr. Chair? Chair? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, this would be added. This was uh, added at the last minute by the governor, um, and he added two things to the bill. We're, we're not going to accept one of them, but this one will be, will be accepted. And actually, when I, I get to my portion of this, the numbers that we have in the bill are not completely accurate. They're going to be changed before we get to ways and means. All right. And I'll make sure that everyone on the committee sees them in advance so that if you have any amendments that you want to make, you'll have the opportunity to do that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Further questions? Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson? Mm -hmm. Uh, Chair, members of the committee, my name is Ben Johnson. I'm the Legislative Director for the Minnesota Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, and I, too, want to acknowledge uh, the agency and the governor's appreciation for the opportunity to continue to work on this very important bill. I also want to uh, call out those members of this uh, committee and say thank you for your interest in continuing to serve Minnesota's veterans and their families. I know that that is a highlight for this committee this year is to make sure that we're taking care of not only veterans, but also their spouses and dependents. Um, we. I don't want to speak too much about what exists in the bill at present because I know that it will change between now and the next committee stop. Um, I would highlight there are a couple of items in here um, that are uh, below the recommended levels from the governor's office and I understand the target is what it is, sir. And thank you again for your willingness to continue to work on this. Um, one in particular is on line 27 of the spreadsheet, the MACV supportive housing grant. That's one area where uh, we would really like to see this, um, the, the partnership with MACV be supported. Uh, there's a, a pretty significant reduction in, in the governor's recommendation here. Um, and it, it's just one area to illustrate that uh, we see a real opportunity to continue to, to go forward here. Um, these are units that are necessary to get to functional zero and veterans homelessness in the state. So I just wanted, for, as an example or illustrative of the opportunity to continue to work, um, that is one area. And the other one I do need to call out, uh, again, uh, the, the chair has been willing to work through this with us. 
um, the, on line uh, 26, the State Veterans Cemetery. Um, this is another area that we really need to focus on. Um, it was an area that has been underfunded in the past. We've been utilizing our cemetery maintenance and development account to take care of some things that typically wouldn't be handled through a CMD account. Um, so this really brings us to full, to full funding for the operational needs of the State Veterans Cemetery. So just another example of an area that, that Chair Newton has agreed a willingness to, to consider. Um, I won't go too, too in depth there beyond to say, again, uh, thank you for the attention in this committee this year. Um, I've been before you a couple times to brief the budget as the governor's recommendation, and I've had really good feedback from members of this committee, um, some really good questions, and uh, I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Good. Are there questions for Mr. Johnson? You're good. And then, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kerr, will you be testifying as well? I don't think so, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair. Uh, Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'll go over uh, basically what we've done here in committee. It's uh, on line 33, uh, Representative Bennett, Bennett's bill on the veterans bonus. Um, the line 35 is increasing the eligibility on the GI Bill. Uh, we have uh, Representative Lissigard's bill on uh, the veterans on the lake, <clears throat> the cemetery uh, burial fee waived for um, spouses, that's a Garofalo bill. Uh, Camp Bliss is Representative Bliss's uh, bill. Uh, the Veterans Resilience Project is Representative Clarity's bill. The Museum Grant is Representative Col Col Coulter's bill. And the Every Third Sunday uh, <coughs> provision is, grant is from Representative Greenman. And then we have uh, the largest item we have on there is the Military Veterans uh, Museum. Um, and that was the, the major funding. Um, as Mr. Johnson said, we, we came to an agreement. We sort of arm wrestled uh, for the last few days. Uh, and I haven't seen his final numbers yet. Uh, but I, I think we're really close right now. And what I've done is I've, uh, excuse me, I've, I've got a terrible cold. I've, I've uh, uh, deleted the uh, Minneapolis Veterans Home for this uh, for this year with the assurance from MDVA that that's going to be their number one priority next year. And I know dealing with veterans that I can count on them to, to follow through with that. Uh, that is a process. It's not a one-time fun, fun, uh, funding and done. It, it takes uh, the, the funding that we get from this committee combined with money from the VA, and it usually takes a couple of years before that happens in any case. The same with all of the veterans' homes. So that's essentially it. And as Mr. Johnson said, you know, this has been, for me, a, a really great committee because we've looked at, at the, the veteran as the whole veteran with his family and her family. and. Uh, you know, ex extended beyond just the needs of, of individual veterans, but to make sure that the families mm. are taken care of as well. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm open for questions. And also, um, mm -hmm. I'd like to, uh, I think Representative Bliss would like to offer the A1 amendment. Yeah, um, Lead Bliss, would you like to offer the A1 amendment to the DE? Thank you, Mr. Chair, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, it it uh, adds uh, to the line on the uh, uh, for the uh, veterans on the Lake Camp Bliss and Ventures Resilience Project uh, that it's for Minnesota residents. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward. And yeah, and I think we discussed it with with the yeah, people prior. The, anyway, I think the chair is recommending a it, yes vote it, on this. It's a good amendment, and I recommend that we pass it, okay. Mr. Chair. Any other conversation or questions? Uh, I think we can do this by a voice fold. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We have the amendment adopted. Mr. Chair. Good. Thank you. And that, mm -hmm. that essentially wraps up our, our business for this, uh, this session. As I said, there, there are some, uh, s some changes that are going to be made, and I make sure that everyone uh, on, on both sides of the aisle is fully aware of what we're doing so that you have a chance if you want to make any other uh, changes. But, but also to contact me or uh, Mr. Koppel 
if, uh, if you have any amendments to this bill that uh, once you go through it again, um, and then we can get it before, I think ways and means, my understanding yep. is um, either just before break or right after uh, Easter break that we will uh, be having this bill before ways and means. Yeah. So is that, I wanna thank you all. This has been a wonderful committee. We've got a lot done together. It's uh, very been very cooperative, and I really appreciate uh, having all of you on the committee. Move it two ways and means. Oh, yeah. oh, and then <clears throat> so, Mr. Chair, I think we ha we'd have to take the formal motion to adopt the DE. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, so moved. Uh, any discussion to the DE? Okay. Uh, all in favor of adopting the DE? Aye. 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 Opposed. And I think we want to move this then to the uh, Ways and Means Committee. Oh, okay, is there anyone from the public who would like to, to testify this before we move it? Guess not. Uh, member discussion? No? This is easy. This is, this, is, this, this committee is uh, so, so easy to get along with. <laughs> Wish all of our committees were this good. Uh, <laughs> Good. Thank you all. Okay, so um, Mr. Chair, would you like to remove your motion that uh, HF 1937 is amended be re referred to the House Ways and Means Committee? That is my motion. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, I think, and I think we're adjourned. Wait. The bill passes. The bill passes as moved, yeah. <laughs> Members, yeah, and this concludes our meetings for the for this session, season. So.